Hello and welcome back to Girls Guide to Germany. Today we have Brittany Elaine here and we are going to talk about how Germany has affected our mental health. We're really going to dive into this topic. Before we get started, we are going to have our little German tea ceremony as we've had in many episodes. We have Yogi Tea, who's not a sponsor yet, so sponsor us. <laughs> and we have a little puzzle here. Okay, siehe dich in anderen und dann sei freudlich gesucht. Dear selbst. Like see yourself and see yourself in others, others and then be friendly, friendly to, to yourself. yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got there. Okay. Well there we go. That is like a little highlight of our episode. <laughs> so cheers. Cheers. We have our fall attire on because it's pretty first few days into fall. Very much so. Brittany got me some flowers, which you can't see there, but they're sunflowers. Yay. If this is your first time listening to Girls Guide in Germany, we created this podcast with Christy, who's not here because she did not manage her time well. Just kidding. <laughs> ADHD. <laughs> yes, Christy is an ADHD queen, and we saw a little bit today when she said, "Oh, I went to run errands, and I didn't manage to get back in time." Christy's <laughs> gonna edit this now, and she's gonna. Uh, uh, see we see you. We see you, Christy. <laughs> and she's also pretty pregnant, about to pop, so she can't be here today. But we miss her, and we're gonna be just fine in this episode. But Girls Guide to Germany, we created this to have a podcast. Which, if someone's new to Germany, or they're here, or they just want to learn better how to thrive in this country, they can just listen to all these episodes and have a really good foundation we have lots of different topics and we've hoped you've already listened to a lot so far this episode comes from bba community which is germany's largest thriving group for an international ambitious woman <laughs> in germany um, we have our whatsapp group which is always rocking on the clock and our website and lots of events in hamburg and Brittany's also been to a few events and spoken at them too. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and we're excited to talk about this one, which is a really important topic to us, mental health abroad. I wonder why Brittany is sitting beside me here today. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have a lot of mental health problems. <laughs> <laughs> She may have mental health problems. Maybe I may have mental health problems which are undiagnosed, but we we're just happy to have a little chat today. Let's talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> We will do our best to keep on topic and not be undiagnosed like ADHD <laughs> people that we may or may not be. But let's start with the first question. Brittany, what has been the biggest mental health challenges since moving to Germany? I think one of my biggest mental health challenges since moving to Germany, honestly, was not even realizing what I was having was mental health challenges. <laughs> I just didn't know that those were the things that I was struggling with. Mm -hmm. And honestly, just not being aware of those things. So I think I have a little bit of a unique situation because when I moved to Germany, I moved a year sober. So I hadn't been drinking for like a year. Mm. And so for me personally, <laughs> I had been just working so much, just 80 hours a week, easily, um, just the typical US corporate America fashion mm -hmm. that I was just like working hard and playing hard all the time just in all my 20s yeah. <laughs> and then it got to the point when I turned 29 and I was just like what we're the same age aren't we 88 baby I'm not calling you baby I'm just like are you oh, an okay. 88 baby no 90 1990 <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> so it was the end of my 20s and I moved here. And it was just during an era of like self-discovery. I couldn't distract myself from mm. work or play or any of the things. I was completely open and I was experiencing um, so many of the feelings and so many of the things all at mm. the same time. I didn't know that it was all connected to mental health. So I would say awareness would be <laughs> definitely um, knowing what I was experiencing was normal and it was okay that I was feeling those things. And I think especially now, like now we hear culture shock a lot mm -hmm. and it's almost like a, oh, ha ha ha, mm -hmm. culture shock. I was surprised by the windows mm -hmm. and that actually isn't culture shock. Yeah. It's an actual thing that you go through from yeah. start to finish. When um, you go to the window and you think you broke it and you have a slight panic attack and you're like oh my god who am i gonna tell i broke the window and then yeah. they're just like no honey this is right and you're like oh okay 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I must say, that's definitely not maybe mental health issues, but you know what I mean? It's like these well, little... It, yeah, it definitely impacts it because yeah. it's you're, you revert to not being able to do or say or be anything. People not knowing who you are as a person or your mm-hmm. personality. I think we'll be talking more about it. That's where the isolation starts. Germany has apparently been one of the loneliest places for expats and to be depressed i think some kind of statistic yeah. like this when i read this i was like it ain't me but <laughs> i get it that some other people struggle when they first come here because it's a lot especially Brittany and i were just talking like we're both from north america canada and america Brittany lives in the countryside in a smaller town and i live in the big city and we've had very different experiences living in Germany. So maybe there's some things you want to talk about. I would say for me, I, it was a little frustrating when I first moved to Germany. All I heard was, don't you worry, Germans, they speak English. <laughs> and I, of course I had that mindset, okay, I'm in Germany, so I have to learn German. But guess what? It was a surprise for me that I even moved to Germany. Mm. It was not in the plan. So when I moved here, I did not know not one word of German. Um, you didn't but have I, to do a lingo streak before you came? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I kept hearing, don't worry, they all speak English, so... Was this your husband at the time saying that? <laughs> it was just everywhere on the internet, I felt like. Oh, okay, you know? okay. Like, can you move to Germany if you speak English? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Well, I couldn't because, well, I live in a little village. To specify, in a little village. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that was very isolating for me with the language barrier. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, like, having to communicate with my husband, Yeah, who is a man. Yeah. We, so that was complicated. We date men. Yeah, we date we men. We choose to. But <laughs> and uh, to. German men. And so mm. you have difficulty communicating across cultures, across different languages, across different, you know, genders. And that was hard to yeah. adapt, I would say. I also moved to Germany for a man, which I'm not together with anymore. It didn't work out. It didn't become my husband as planned, but other (laughs) other things went as planned. And I remember it being quite hard because you're moved to Germany for someone who's used to how the country is, doesn't have any perspective to see how it's from the outside, and you might move in with them or you start dating them. If they're good, they'll be empathetic towards the situation, but sometimes like the empathy can be also very isolating because they don't know. They just don't know what's going through your mind when you're thrown in these situations where you have to go sit at dinner with the family and everyone's speaking German and you're just sitting there being like, <laughs> yeah, in your head and how isolating this can be and how you also want to make a good impression. Absolutely. And you're just like, I'm just going to sit here and <laughs> smile until the coffee and cooking is over. <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, they're coming to you with all these different things like, oh, it's cake and this is got to use this fork and we're using our left hand and we're using knife and fork and like all these things which are just, just like so much pressure. That's the way that Brady and I both grew on TikTok was just these culture shocks and stuff. And they are funny. Yeah. They're very funny, but like really they can really affect your mental health because in Germany at least I think people, they don't look down at you, but I think there's like a standard of living and a certain standard of how people behave in public and if you have this like external pressure that you don't even have like a written guidebook to Mm. it can be stressful it can be really overwhelming it's just one of those things i mean for me a lot of times my problems that i had was i didn't know if this was just me Mm -hmm. or is this the culture that i'm in now am i doing something wrong is there something wrong with me Mm. what am i doing and what do do i need to change and even at the most basic level and i don't know when i left the u.s i did it because i wanted to travel the world and Mm. and you know um embrace my strong independence i felt in a way that i lost all sorts of independence when I moved to Germany and I felt like I couldn't do anything right. I mm-hmm. couldn't even speak <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell a joke. And I just wanted to look at people and be like, I promise you I have a personality. I am smart mm. and I can tell jokes, <laughs> but I just can't do it in this language. And this is something is exactly like I've been in Germany for 10 years now and people make fun of me for the fact that I do not speak German fluently. And yes, uh, 
probably should make fun of me because I probably should have tried a lot harder. But also I was put into an English bubble and workplace was English. My boyfriends, ex-boyfriends also spoke me in English. All my friends were international people. When you're not in that uh, integration of German all the time, your German's not going to be there. And or else you have to pay out of pocket for German lessons and pay with your time as a working person when you're working the whole day and then going to a German lesson evening class. I tried that. Mental health was not good after this. You just have to give up and be like, you know what? My German is good enough, but I'm the same. I do not have a personality in German. I feel like when I talk, I just sound like a child. <laughs> and this is when I prefer in German, I do try to I have to go to a lot of events in Hamburg where it's mostly German speakers and I try my best and I really try, but it always comes, you know, they, they switch to English eventually because I think they just feel me just like, yes, ha 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 ha. You also don't want to be the person to make them switch to English. No. You feel like that weird, like, oh, this must be like a, you don't want to feel like the disability in the group, you know, they want to also speak their mother tongue too, so. For sure, it's, you know, I try to take responsibility and I have certain rules in place, right? Mm. It got to the point where, um, like, in the household, uh, I would speak a lot of English with mm my husband and I know for a fact that I have a German husband I should take advantage of the opportunity to be able to speak with a German speaker but when I first moved here I didn't know anybody yeah. and the only source of any type of connection or communication mm -hmm. was in English and it was at home and then when you're you know having a fight then yeah. you have to use it in a in a language that you can both understand yeah um but then I was able to change that you know and adapt you go outside into the public speak German these type of things I like, created rules yeah um but if you feel like a different person mm -hmm. in in the different language and I still am not able to get what I really want across at all <laughs> actually I mean, I'm fully self-employed now and I didn't have a job where I needed German. I mean, it was great to have German, but it wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. And I worked for many years just in English. And now I'm a very well-trained professional with tons of experience under my belt. And I'm even looking perhaps dabbling back in the job market, but I want, you know, a pretty good job. And it's just like, oh my God, like I should know German, mm -hmm. you know, because like, but I, you know, it's just not that level where, you know, you could work 100% in German. I think I could work in German like 30% of the the time but it's hard because you're like I'm never gonna be up to that standard yeah of other people and there's always gonna be this race or you're gonna have this disability of not knowing German so people will can take advantage of you they can pay you less because you just need the job but yeah this is, this is definitely hard but I'm taking online classes still so it's a slow burn I think that's another thing for at least in my experience was that especially in the beginning it feels like mm -hmm. you just can't catch up it's almost like owning a business moving to a different country because mm -hmm. you just feel like everything is super important all at the same time uh, for me I had to do my politics course and the integrations course and I had to do learn the language but also I had to learn about social security in the US and a pension in Germany but also I'm barely an adult oh and the tax <laughs> deadline is coming and I'm an, I don't know how to adult yet <laughs> I gotta file taxes in two countries yeah. oh the finance app oh you're late with your tax payments Six oh i can't go grocery shopping because i don't know what this means and i can't use this um you know recipe and oh i'm really really homesick right yeah. now and i don't know what to do and nobody that actually is understanding my struggle right now yeah but also i'm living my dream <laughs> and i should be grateful for this yeah exactly. <laughs> you know and this goes to say, this is probably in your first few years in Germany. Now it's yeah. definitely, we've sorted it out. But like, if you are feeling like this in your first year in Germany, or you're not, ex you don't know what to expect when you move here. Like, yeah. this is just like the stuff that goes through our heads constantly. Yeah. Like, there's all these little check boxes that you have to do. And that leads me on to the next topic is that you actually have ADHD or most yeah. likely have ADHD. Yeah. And how does that affect things. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It really has affected um, myself personally um, and my life in Germany and trying to just to do things and manage my life and get things done yeah. um, all at once. So that's really difficult to do. I had to start setting up like systems mm -hmm. in my I house. I saw one on your videos like this was it TikTok where you had this like click thing? Are you still using that? Which one? It's like a thing that you like click backwards and forwards like for the housework. Oh yeah. That's on my fridge. 
Yeah, and uh, you use it every day? Um, I use it to initiate a habit because someone with ADHD, it's really hard to build habits mm -hmm. and then keep them sustainable. Mm -hmm. And so I just have to use different tricks, like the little checkboard uh, on the chores list. Mm -hmm. And then once my brain gets used to that dopamine of like, oh, you accomplished something. Yeah, you've the done little it. dopamine of checking it off. Yeah, um, it's a habit. And then I usually just replace it with something else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I know you're also working as a teacher. Yes. And you probably hadn't taught in another country before. You were. Actually, no, I did not. I didn't really um, teach in my own country either in the traditional school setting as yeah. well. I was just did business management and that also was my job in the U.S. And that's why they hired me because I'm a business correspondence teacher. Mm -hmm. And that um, is definitely a struggle um, having to adapt to the German way of, of working. Mm -hmm. Or not working, I might add, compared to my own experience. But do you feel like the German way of working is better for your mental health? Yes, for sure. I do. Yeah. But for me, my biggest problem is like understanding what's going on, mm -hmm. knowing the rules, knowing what is and is not okay. And for me, I just naturally have, I'm an introvert. I, I have social anxiety. I don't really know what the other person is thinking. Yeah. Um, so that was hard when I moved here and I just didn't know any of the things. But yeah. once I figured them out, I loved it Yeah. because it made it easier. Because in a sense, certain things are, I wouldn't say predictable, mm -hmm. but they're pretty structured. Mm -hmm. And once you know the rules and you follow them, I, there's no unexpected surprises for mm -hmm. me. And at least in my experience working, you know, in the restaurant and tourism industry in the U.S., they uh, take a work-life balance way more seriously. Yeah, I mean, I worked in a German company for many years. Your weekends are sacred and your fire ovens are sacred. Yes. And I really like that people in Germany respect people's fire ovens or their, I don't even know what the translation is, free evening. Yeah. That sounds so weird. Celebration of getting off work early. Yeah. <laughs> no, or like getting off of work. The celebration of not working anymore <laughs> yeah. and going home is a fire oven. Yeah. I love that and that, you know, people can just go pick up their kids at 3 p.m. if they need to and it's like no stress. But also, I think Germans work very, very hard and I was lucky in the company I was in uh, that it was good. But I've heard nightmares yeah. from other German companies where it's not necessarily like the fire ovens, but it's like the company culture mm. and the... And the senior management and the way people give feedback or criticism, may I say, is very different. And this definitely affected my mental health. And it's affected me today that I am so straightforward because of this now that I just say how I feel. And that's probably good, but sometimes it can come off maybe a little bit obtrusive or rude. But I remember my first years in Germany, it was like, oh, you do this task, please. And then you get the feedback and they're so like, no, not this. Or change that, didn't like this. And you're just like, do I suck? <laughs> yeah. The sandwich compliment doesn't exist. So no. the sandwich compliment is like very um, normal in North American culture where yeah. you say something nice. Yeah. And then you give critical feedback and then you end with something nice. Yeah. You start off feeling good and you leave feeling better. <laughs> In Germany, it's just say what we want, get the job done. You did this wrong. <laughs> Fix it. I, that was one of my first viral videos on TikTok was like a workplace skit. And I was like, I don't like this color blue. Fix it. All in Canada it would be like, this blue is not my favorite blue. But like, I really, would, I like the direction of that blue. But could you please pick another blue? And you can just understand like how easy it is to feel when someone talks to you like that versus like, no, don't like the blue. Pick another blue. Like, this blue sucks in red comment. Like, <laughs> This is not an abnormal, like, this is just very forward, direct stuff. And that definitely affects your mental health if you're not used to it. Because you're just like, I suck. I should quit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I had that the first years too. But I think it's something you got to get used to. Definitely. Um, you do get used to it. So I had a lot of problems with that too. Because I think I needed some sort of external validation, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> of doing anything. 
and I didn't get it in the ways that I'm used to. In the U.S. and Canada, it's a very big compliment culture, mm. and, co- and strangers talking to strangers, complimenting them. It just is so natural, and not having that, you don't even realize that the little things like that are going to affect you, but then they do. Mm. But then you get used to it, and that's what culture shock is. You get acclimated to it, and then you realize, um, even though Germans don't compliment very often, when they do, they mean it. And it, and, it, and it feels great. It feels great. <laughs> when I give compliments to Germans, they're just so like, oh, thanks. And you're mm. like, what? I like your sweater. They're like, <laughs> like I don't know. What do I say to this? <laughs> <laughs> it is really nice when you see it. It's very genuine. And it's not just to like yeah. fill a gap of silence or something. It's just like, wow, they complimented me. Um, But let's go into the topic. We're, we're just yapping already. But I think one thing that's really nice is that in Germany, uh, the healthcare isn't free. It's never, it's not like it's wrong, but it's the public health system works for me way better than in Canada. And one thing that's actually included in the public health care in Germany is a senior psychologist. This is included if you can get an appointment. <laughs> Yeah, and that's another subject. But how do you think like mental health in Germany compares like how the government and all the services in Germany compared to North America? I feel <laughs> that um, I do feel like the services and the topic is a little lacking in Germany. In my experience, mm-hmm. I don't know what your experience is, but I do feel like the topic is also very a lot more taboo. And at least in the United States, I feel like it's a lot more um, talked about openly. But the services, like for instance, I can't go on burnout leave in the US yeah, that's and get true. paid for it. Like these kind of things, you would just have to quit your job, I think. Here in Germany, you, you had a TikTok about this, right? The burnout thing? The yeah. burnout leave. Yeah. yeah. If you feel like you have burnout, you can actually go to your doctor who will assign you to a psychologist, maybe not even that, and they can put you on sick leave for a certain amount of time. Um, I've never taken it. I have friends who have taken it. They were basically paid their full salary for up to six weeks Mm -hmm. and then if it's still not back they get like i think only a certain percentage of the salary which is then paid by your health insurance yeah and you can even go to things like rehab called cures Mm -hmm. where you're sent to literally like a day spa or a fully paid for three week spa the cures where you can go and they'll work on your mental health and i think this is amazing like that that's actually paid by the government yeah, absolutely. My husband and I, we've actually been really struggling a lot the, since 2021 behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, he got diagnosed with long COVID. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you this right now, that is such a heavy and not easy big topic, uh, especially when it comes to his mental health, my mental health, how mm-hmm. we're navigating that together. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing I was really grateful about um, was that we had a lot of services and it was already so difficult just dealing with the situation and learning how to navigate it and how to get access to those things that you need yeah i was like really happy that he was even able to take because he did the rehab as well Mm -hmm. even though in the u.s when you say rehab it usually has like a negative yeah (laughs) but rehab in germany is just like a normal thing that can be paid by your public health insurance i went to rehab yeah uh for my endometriosis i was after my surgery i was sent because it was such a bad case i was taken from the hospital uh, after the hospital they prescribed me to three weeks of reha and i was sent to a beautiful hospital by the lake with a cute park and i was given massages and got my own psychologist and i had a doctor at my call 24 7 i was fed three meals a day and was there's walking groups there was like so many things to do i have i was aqua fitness yeah. and they I, have it for everything so i loved have, it <laughs> yeah like they had it for your endometriosis they had a uh, long covid centers they also have it for example like i have asthma and they have it to where you can take yourself or your child to the ocean and they have like rehabilitation centers there for mm. people who have asthma mm. and they and it's great about it it's not just you go there and you receive these services just for those few weeks they help you with a lot of your day-to-day life afterwards and, and they also have psychologists at these rehas that will give you coping strategies for having these illnesses or burnout or diseases which i think is really cool like this is worth so much and i really don't I, i've never heard of this in canada maybe if like rehabilitation centers if you've been in a bad car accident where you're going to like 
stuff but like not something where you live there yeah for a few weeks i've never heard of this other than when you're a drug addict <laughs> yeah absolutely right you're going to rehab yeah. wait a minute for what <laughs> yeah i went to rehab in germany yeah clickbait <laughs> It was really nice to rehab. What kind of self practices have you implemented? I know we talked about your like clicky chore thing to stay sane as an international woman slash immigrant in Germany or even abroad. Like I think these can go with many topics like living abroad. Yes. What self care practices I've been doing is an hour to myself every single day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, before, especially with my ADHD, it's like, I'm just going to journal every day and I'm going to do yoga every single morning and I'm going to do all of these things. And I just realized that what's most important is that you cut out a certain amount of time every single day for yourself to take care of yourself, to focus on yourself mm -hmm. and just notice how you're feeling and what's going on. And you journal. Hmm? You journal. Yes, yeah. I do journal. I junk journal. Yeah. And journal journal. Can't say I do that. <laughs> I journal or take an hour from myself every single day. But um, I have really, really long mornings. And I'm privileged because I'm self-employed. So I don't have to work a nine to five. But I've noticed that I really just need a lot of time in the morning to like prepare myself for the day. Mm -hmm. um, whether that is taking going for a walk. I like to go for little treat walks. Yeah. Like, I mean, you don't have that privilege of being in Hamburg, but I live in <clears throat> a neighborhood where there's lots of coffee shops. I love going for little treats. I like taking myself for a walk and eating a nice coffee, going around. This has definitely been super helpful for me. Blocking my social media apps in the morning. Mm -hmm. I have my social media apps blocked until nine in the morning because I just think even you probably have the same. When you go to bed at night, your family and friends in Canada are living their whole day and yeah. you'll just get like a million messages as soon as you wake up. So it's like, okay, let's like ease, in, quiet let's ease into this. <laughs> and trying new things has definitely yeah. helped me with my mental health. Uh, we talked about this in the previous podcast, our Get Out of the Comfort Zone podcast, but it took me a really long time to try new things in Germany that I used to love in Canada, like a dance class or a ceramics course or a painting class because I was so scared that I would have to speak German there and people would make fun of me or give me the side eye because I'd be the random person asking for a translation, which actually doesn't mean anything like yeah. you should not be afraid of this but once I started doing like new things and trying new things my mental health definitely improved because I felt independence yeah. come back and that's one thing I tell to people if you've moved to Germany for a man or a partner try to get your independence as soon as possible mm -hmm. like letting them do everything for your whole relationship is not going to help you because in my case when my relationship didn't work out that was really hard on the mental health because I had to do everything yeah. by myself in German without that support group like how to call Vodafone and how yeah. to get energy providers and write the landlord and everything like this and, and that's a whole other thing too yeah. because even whenever you're in that relationship you also feel that guilt yeah. of having them yeah. and there is that burden there even though they love to help yeah. and you love them and you're trying your best resentments will build miscommunications will happen yeah that's why i totally agree you need to be as independent yeah so i always tell the girlies like hey try doing some of the things even if you have to use chat to translate it just like try doing some stuff by yourself because this is going to make you feel so much better it's going to feel like you have like your own footings here and not just dependent on someone else absolutely so if you're just new in germany or you're thinking about moving here what were some things that you could have done to prepare yourself for the mental health load moving to germany mm, like i'm looking back at old me yeah what would you have done what would you have changed before coming here to improve your mental health when you arrive oh my gosh that's a good one <laughs> i would have prepared for the winter better because i live in the north mm -hmm. and i have seasonal depression <laughs> and so i would have um just being aware of that and being able to prepare for that mm -hmm. um also Building maybe a connection before coming mm -hmm. would have been really nice, like with the BBA community. Honestly, great. <laughs> Just to get out and talk to people in English. I would have made myself like a routine or habit to get connected in the community more yeah definitely. like even if you're connecting just, yeah basically. i have people messaging me all the time saying they're moving to germany and i give them the whatsapp group for the bba community and they're like oh my god this is great yeah. like they already have a sounding board to like get some advice so it's perfect and also um when you get here to start really building at least one routine meaning go to the same cafe like go really? to the same bookstore. Yeah. And whatever it is that you like to do, because then your people are going to know you and they're going to talk to you eventually, depending. Within your first two weeks of living in Germany, you should know how to go to the bakery and order yeah. 
three brochins. Yeah. But remember to do three yeah. instead of three because that's going to confuse them yeah and just go into the same bakery and talk to them or whatever place that you go to choose one really one small thing that you really enjoy to do and do it like over and over again and then you'll find the connection that you really need because i i say my biggest problem would be the social and like anxiety mm-hmm. and just the anxiety in general um, and also the isolation, because that's what led to everything else. Yeah. So finding any type of connection out into the world. Don't uh, be afraid to put yourself out there. The more you're going to stay in your shell and stay inside or need someone to hold your hand to leave the house and go on the bus, yeah. the longer you're going to be sad yeah. for. So just take the little steps, but don't take too slow on the little steps. Like try to push baby yourself. Steps. Baby steps, but like fast baby steps you know? but not enough they're just gonna like fall flat on your face <laughs> anyways that was our podcast thank you so much for listening and thank you Brittany, for coming here and also visiting us in hamburg we're gonna go and have hipster coffees after this maybe some cafe and cooking we did forgot to eat lunch yes we so did. we're gonna skip lunch and go straight to cake yes. very german of us <laughs> but if you don't know the bba community we have all the links below or at bbacommunity.com or on instagram and you can follow me hannah Teslin or Christy, Christy Hayo. She's not here, but she'll be back soon after her baby's here and she's done her first mother yeah. mothering time. And Brittany, yeah. Brittany Elaine, Brittany right? Elaine <laughs> on Instagram or TikTok. Um, we will see or YouTube or YouTube. Yeah, we'll <laughs> link everything in the description, and we hope to see you at our next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>